Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. For some time, we've been talking about this uh, commercial real estate bubble, which has been happening, brewing for some time. And the late Charlie Munger had also spoken about it, saying that it's going to be with the cause of the biggest problem for the world economy because of the real estate uh, commercial bubble sitting in the US. So I thought today I'll talk about that. And towards the end of the video, kind of give a prognosis on where we stand and how things can play out either way. So first, we need to understand the context of the problem and how this problem came about. This problem came about because it was part of the solution of the 2007-8 crisis. During the 2007-8 crisis, there was a real estate bubble in the residential sector in the US, which led to a, the market and the world economy, by and large, going through a kind of a recession. And there was a crisis at the time where banks stopped trusting each other because banks were scared of failing. We all remember the Lean Brothers video, Bear Stearns. So the Fed stepped in at the time and try to fix the problem by creating a lot of liquidity in the market. And that liquidity had to find something because interest rates drop down to zero. When liquidity is created in a market, what happens is interest rates go flat. And that's what the Fed did, and they were holding it for a long time. So what are the implications of that? What that means is most times investors, they like good stable returns. And the go-to investment for most seasoned investors and uh, conservative investors is to have a certain amount of bond in their portfolio. Bond is uh, completely tied to the Fed and its interest rates. If Fed drops their interest rates, bond rates also drop. And when Feds increase interest rates, bond rates also increase. It runs in tandem. So when the Fed, because of the 2007-8 crisis, dropped the interest rate to zero, what happened is bonds did not become profitable anymore. So investors needed to find somewhere to put their money. Now, that is one issue. That was one part of the problem. Meaning the solution that became the problem. The other thing is you need to understand how real estate is financed. Real estate in the US is the way it's financed is, which is different in India is, in India, borrowing money for residential properties is very easy. You're allowed to and it's uh, governed by RBI and most big banks offer you real estate loans. Well, commercial loans for commercial properties is very hard in India. So people think of different ways of getting finance for real estate properties and real estate uh, ventures in India, commercial real estate that is. In the US, you can borrow money from the bank and uh, you can buy commercial real estate. And it's a great avenue of business for the banks because they can give loans out and collect interest for these loans. And in turn, the person who takes the loan will go buy a commercial establishment, put it up for rent, and the rental income would pay the loan. And at the end of the day, when you finish paying the loan, you're left with a pretty commercial property, which is all yours, and its loans paid up. At least this is what was in theory. What happened in practice? Because banks were offering zero interest, near zero interest loans, and this is all available in the market, and investors in turn, because like I said previously, bond was not a viable option to invest anymore and wanted to invest in something, they decided to put their money into real estate, commercial real estate. So a lot of people borrowed money for cheap in the U.S., and they went ahead and bought commercial real estate and they rented it out and in turn took the rental income and were paying the EMI. And slowly they were surplusing some cash and they were feeling great. Everything was going very well. At the one point, WeWork itself was one of the largest renters in uh, Manhattan. So you can imagine how big it was and how big the bubble had grown because you all know the WeWork story. So this is where we were. Then, of course, the pandemic happened. 2020, the pandemic happened and... We were all working from home. We had lockdowns and these commercial properties suddenly froze. There were no more rental incomes for the owners of these commercial properties because there was no clarity. So what the owners of these commercial establishments in the bank came to an agreement is that they will not do anything and they'll pause it as is, the payments and everything, and wait for this thing to pass. And once this pandemic lockdowns are over, People will come back to office, we'll get our rental income. And at that point of time, we'll relook at it. Well, that was great as an idea. But what happened, unfortunately, is now post-pandemic, the real estate occupancy on commercial properties is not where it used to be. It's far lower. In the country which is the worst affected is the US, even in, in India and across Asia, the occupancy of commercial real estate has not picked up to the volumes it was pre-pandemic. So what does this mean? There's a lot of real estate, especially in the US, which are not being occupied by anybody and are up for sale. Very funnily enough, you can buy complete commercial, huge skyscraper buildings for less than a dollar. 
if you're willing to take the loan, which it's tied to. And properties are being marked down by 50-45% and being sold. So this is just the beginning of what Munger was talking about. We already saw New York Bank struggling and have uh, put more money aside for loans failing. We saw this happening with the Japanese bank, where they put more money aside for loans which are expected to fail. It's also affected the German bank. And all this is important to pay attention to because the US is the largest market in the world. All large banks have exposure to commercial real estate in the US. And there's lack of clarity on what is going to happen. That is why there's immense pressure on the Fed to lower the interest rate. That's why it's always constantly there is market news saying Fed is going to lower the interest rate now. They're going to start cutting rates now. They're going to start cutting rates now because that is the only feasible solution to financing these properties. Because the loan rates will come down, the EMIs will come down and there'll be a possibility of refinancing these properties and, uh, you know, continuing. Right now, the Fed cannot control economy such that you can bring the interest rate down because the American market is doing very well and it's very hot. And there's huge fear that inflation is not under control and inflation can start ticking again, moving upwards. Like I said in a previous video, that we're looking at something like the 1970s, 1980s, where we saw tapering of the interest rate, then suddenly seeing inflation starts decreasing and suddenly it takes a U-turn and starts going even higher. So we're at that kind of a precipice because of what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in the Suez, what's happening in the Panama Canal, What's happening in China? If you look at it everywhere in the world, things are not looking great globally. There is no real safe pocket. Plus, the election cycle is happening across the globe in most countries. So all this put together, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. And uncertainty is not what investors like or market likes. So what is going to cause this domino to fall? Will it fall? Is something we have to wait and watch. And investors seeing past, especially fresh in the memory of 2011, 2008, is not too far back. That event being very fresh in the memory, if one or two banks start failing, then there will be a domino effect much faster than what it was in 2007-2008. We do not know how this is going to happen, if it's going to happen at all. But a lot of regional banks in the US, which is very different from India, there are a lot of small, small regional banks spread out completely across the United States. Those are the ones where we have to really keep an eye on. And these, it's like the Wild West, that really don't have much clarity on what is happening. And we sitting in India are really not cued into it. So to try and keep up with the news and see what's happening. There's no cause to panic right now, but there is cause for concern. So that's what I'd like to share with you today and let you keep that thought in your mind as you go around reading news and seeing more videos about this. Thanks for watching the video again, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money, and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to brichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.